Good morning, everyone, finally. And uh, I praise God for this beautiful morning He has given us. And I hope that you are settled wherever you are right now, in your seats, at your home, for those who are watching online. We are continuing again with our series in the book of Hebrews. And we started this uh, series last June 6, 2021, if I am not mistaken. I'm not really good in remembering, but this is also something that I cannot just uh, forget because it was me who was tasked to give the introductory or the opening message for this series. <clears throat> and if you have been following with us here every Sunday, you will know that uh, we are already on the nearing towards the end of the series since it, we are already in the 10th chapter of this book. And this, cha- this book has only 13 chapters. Okay, I hope that those who are uh, with us today online and those who have not yet tried to worship with us here in our alfresco uh, worship service area, I hope that one of these Sundays before this series will end, you can uh, join us worshiping here. We have been praying that uh, the COVID cases will go down so that we can go back to our normal activities. And I hope that part of the normal activities that you are praying for is going to church. Because the malls right now and the tourist destination or tourist spots are packed with people. The church, I don't know. <laughs> now I just hope that uh, you will uh, join us here physically because it's really different. Okay? And uh, if you don't like to be hugged, don't like to shake hands because you're very, very cautious, it's okay. As long as we can see your handsome and beautiful faces here with us in our church. So like what I have said, this book has only 13 chapters. And most of these chapters are talking about the supremacy and the sufficiency of the Lord Jesus Christ. And right in the very first verses, in the very first chapter, the writer of Hebrews directly emphasized and pointed out these points about the Lord Jesus Christ's supremacy and sufficiency. That He is more than enough. He is more than enough that, we, that the people need in their life. As a sermon written for the Jew believers who are greatly discouraged because of fierce persecution, the writer of Hebrews encouraged them by pointing out and uh, reminding them or making them aware or know that putting their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ is the right and the best thing to do. He continued by uh, giving the details on why Jesus is d- deserves to be trusted or to, to put their trust and their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. According to the writer of Hebrews, if you believe and if you have high regards and uh, respect for the angels, for the high priest, for the kings, for the prophets, and even for Moses, who are less superior and less sufficient than the Lord Jesus Christ. Then point, by, pointing, by pointing that out, the writer of Hebrews was praying and hoping that this will encourage them, knowing that where they have put their trust and their faith into, is in the right place, which is in the Lord Jesus Christ, so that they will not give up on their faith. Instead, they will continue. They will continue, they will be encouraged, and they continue to put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. The writer of Hebrews was giving this presentation about Christ's supremacy and sufficiency from verse 1 of chapter 1 until verse 18 of chapter 10 which was the message last week by Pastor David, is about to come to an end. Our finally has come to an end in verse 18. In verse 19, okay, by the way, nalimot ko, namanay sa ako ang lectern. Let's go to our text for this morning. This is entitled, A Believer's Response. Our text is found in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 to 25. 
Shall we read it? If you have your Bibles with you, I'm reading from the NIV version. Okay, verse 19. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain, the veil, that is His body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance that faith brings having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Verse 24, And let us consider how we may spur one another on to, toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Okay? So along with this presentation from chapter 1 to chapter 10, verse 18, the writer of Hebrews did not just give these truths, these facts, these uh, evidences of who the Lord Jesus Christ is, but he also gave them warnings. Warnings that if they will continue on what they are planning to give up, like what they have seen on those uh, on, the, on other believers, so-called believers, who have fallen away, that there will be serious consequences. The first warning came in chapter two, verse three. I'm sorry, I have not included it in my in my PowerPoint, but you can check your Bibles. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3, the first warning came. He said, how can we escape if we neglect so great salvation? He's simply telling them that if you think that the reason of your uh, hardship, the reason of your uh, difficulties right now, it's because of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are mistaken. Because if you will fall away, Okay, abandon your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, turn away. You are giving yourself or bringing yourself more trouble, not just in this life, but in, eternal, in eternity. In chapter 4, 5, and 6, more and more warnings. Another warning came, he said, if we know these things, what is he referring to? All those things that he has discussed from chapter 1 to chapter 10 about who the Lord Jesus Christ is. And all those things that we have heard already from the previous uh, sermons here by our pastors. If you already know these things, especially if you already understand, uh, you have understood it, but yet you choose to fall away, it is impossible to be renewed to repentance. It means that it is possible for you to find your way to repentance. And now as this presentation of who the Lord Jesus Christ is has finally come to an end in verse 18 of chapter 10, notice that chapter 19, uh, verse 19 starts with the word, therefore. I don't know what comes into your mind when you hear the word, therefore. But I always remember, therefore, during the high school days and college days when we make our experiments, science, physics, make problem solving, right? after we have performed or done all these steps, all these uh, uh, procedures, finally we come to our answer and we say, we say, therefore. Or we write the shortcut of therefore, three dots forming triangle, therefore. Which means that we are making a conclusion. So in other words, chapter 10 verse 19 is the start of the conclusion of what has been discussed from chapter 1 to chapter 10, verse 18. Okay? And the speaker is actually saying that after all that I have discussed, after all that I have presented of who the Lord Jesus Christ is, His supreme, why He's supreme, superior, and sufficient. Now, after all these things, you need to respond. You need to respond. And this response is what we will be talking about this morning. 
But before we go on, shall we bow down for a short prayer? Father in heaven, we are praising you and thanking you, O Lord, <coughs> for another opportunity and privilege, O God, to be able, Lord, to be ministered by your word. We acknowledge, O God, that uh, your word, O Lord, is the same, O God, cannot be changed. And your message, O God, for stands still, O Lord God, today, as you have declared it in the past, O Lord. It is our prayer that you will truly minister to us, that you allow your words, O Lord, to speak into our hearts, and that make our minds understand, O Lord God, and it will result into, Lord, doing something, O God, out of this message that you, have, that you will reveal to us this morning. Protect us with your unwavering hand. Allow us to focus on you and you alone, Lord Jesus. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I don't know how many times I have joined or have been invited and joined to a business presentation. Uh, normally, I categorize it in two parts. No, duha lang ka klase. The first one is what you wish, where you wish you usually hear the phrase, open-minded ka ba? So what does it tell? Kung saan siya ang business presentation? Networking. No? I have joined many networkings. And it's there I realized that I'm not really good in sales because I have never been successful in a networking business. I envy those who have been so successful. But I have joined many of those because invited by a friend, invited by a client. And another is, you hear the, the phrase, what do you think will happen to your family if something happens to you? You need assurance, security. Not security agency. No? But what kind of presentation is that? Insurance policy presentation. Okay, I'm sure you have already also, uh, you have also joined or you are either you are the one presenting or the one being presented to. No matter how long or short the presentation, no matter how boring or interesting the presentation, it will come to a point that you need to respond. Especially if the one presenting is a gapa sa kuta. Hey, you need to respond. And the response can only be a positive or a negative response. Positive if you will join the networking. You will buy the policy. Negative if you will say, ha, sorry, I'm only here for the snacks. I'm full now. I have to go. In fairness, let me eat your snacks. In the same way, the writer of Hebrews, as he was leading after his uh, presentation of who the Lord Jesus Christ, as he was leading the listeners to make the right response, he also received either a positive or negative response. And for this morning, we will be focusing on the positive response. So what is a positive response to what has been said to them? All those things that they have heard. Because what they have heard is actually a complete, detailed gospel presentation. And what is a positive response to a gospel presentation? It means salvation. Salvation in its truest sense. This morning, it is my prayer and my desire that each and every one of us will be enlightened, will be reminded what is salvation and what is not. Many of us believe that as long as you pray the sinner's prayer, when we share the gospel, we usually don't like want to end without praying the sinner's prayer. Even though we have not presented the gospel properly, our goal is the sinner's prayer. If they say the sinner's prayer, then they will be saved. But there is always a doubt on how genuine and sincere the heart of the person praying that prayer if he truly understood and believed unsa iya ang nasabtan, then yes, he is saved or she is saved. But only God knows the sincerity and the genuineness of a person's heart praying that prayer. That's why it's only God who knows who among us here are truly saved. But the Bible, that's why we need to read the Bible. The Bible gives us 
In many instances, descriptions, okay, illustrations of what is a person who is truly saved and what is salvation. We read in the Bible where it says, you know a tree by its fruit. You know a person if he's truly saved by the fruit of his life. Because it's easy to declare and claim that you are saved. And in our text this morning, actually, it is describing to us also what is salvation by giving us three features of what salvation is. Number one feature is found in verse 22. <coughs> it says there, Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance that faith brings. Like what I have said, the writer of Hebrews is actually leading his listeners towards making the right response. That's why he starts with the word, let us, encouraging. Let us, let us draw near to God. This is an invitation for them to respond in faith. Drawing near to God is responding in faith to who the Lord Jesus Christ is and what He did. That is one feature of what salvation is. Believing who the Lord Jesus Christ, what He did, and the significance of what He did. It was discussed here by Pastor Jonathan and Pastor David two Sundays ago. If you have remembered the significance of the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, His coming. Okay? Because prior to Jesus coming here on earth, <coughs> no one can come into the presence of God or they will die. That is why this place in the temple called the Holy of Holies where they believe the presence of God was, was separated by this thick cloth called the veil in order to separate a holy God from sinful people. <coughs> and the only one who can come inside this Holy of Holies is the high priest. And even the high priest is not guaranteed to come out alive. That's why they tie a rope in the legs or the feet of the high priest going inside. Because if the high priest will die, nobody dares to go inside and pick the body or they will die also. But they will just pull the rope to get the body. That is how sacred it is. Because a holy God cannot accept the sinfulness of these people. And the, the, the high priest goes inside to bring the offering, burnt offerings, blood, the animal and its blood. Because they believe in Hebrews 9, 22, that the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. <laughs> but they did not understand that what they have been taught are just foreshadowing of what is about to come. That all these things will come into effect after Jesus will come and die on the cross and shed His blood. That those rams, those bulls, those sheep's blood were never enough to pay the penalty of sins. That is why they need to do it every year. Every year. Because it did not cleanse them from their sins. In fact, Hebrews 10, 3 said, But those sacrifices are an annual reminder of their sins. It was only meant to remind them of how sinful they were. And we all know that it's only the blood of Jesus that can take away the sins. And it's only the blood of Jesus at His death that was able to tear to tore the veil into two. To open the way for sinful people that has become made righteous because of the blood of Jesus to come into the presence of God. 
When Jesus died on the cross, after he, bre he breathed his last breath, and he said, it is finished, the veil in the temple was torn into two. Taking away the separation from a holy God and sinful people. That is the significance of the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. The shedding of His blood. Now we enjoy, now we can enjoy coming into the presence of God wherever we are, anytime, because of what Jesus did for us. And coming into the presence of God or drawing near to God is not only limited into going to church, because this is not only the place where the presence of God is, but the presence of God is in every heart of a believer. That is why we can worship Him in spirit and in truth wherever we are. Drawing near to God is actually having a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Nurturing, nourishing that relationship by constant communion, communication, communicating with the Lord Jesus Christ. Through our prayers, through reading His Word. And allowing His Word to come alive into our lives. That is drawing near to God in faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Second feature of what salvation is is found in verse 23. It says there, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. So this means that a person who is truly saved does not does not only respond in hope, I in faith, but also respond in hope. Now, can imagine the, the passion and the energy of the writer of Hebrews as he or she was giving this, knowing that many of them were discouraged and about to give up. And many said that they are believers, but they have already fallen, already fallen away. As he was emphasizing this, that if you have been truly saved, you have salvation. It's like him saying this to them indirectly. That if you have put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing who he is, what he did, it is impossible for you not to be able to have this hope that will make you stand, that will make you persevere. Hope. What does hope mean? I have searched the dictionary and the dictionaries and this is the one that I really like, the meaning of hope. Hope is defined, ang sa itong dictionary, no? As to expect with confidence. Expecting with confidence, that is how hope defined. <coughs> I give you an illustration to somehow make you understand more about hope. A father and a child, his son, went somewhere to eat, to enjoy in a modern uh, city, no? like, for example, uh, BGC, like that, enjoying the buildings, eating, the sceneries. And then the father realized that in about 15 minutes, he has a very important make-or-break meeting for his business. That he cannot bring his son home to, to be able to make it to the meeting on time. And he also cannot bring his son with him. So what he did is he told his son, Son, you need to stay here where we are right now, where you can sit. It's cold here. It's aircon. There are security guards. There's policemen. You're safe. All you have to do is just wait for me because I will come back for you after the meeting. And the child said, okay, dad, I'll wait for you. So the father went to the meeting, one hour, two hours, wala pa na human ng meeting, did not finish yet. Three hours, and can you imagine what the child was doing there? But he stayed there. A child now can only wait for five, ten minutes or seconds. Then it's a happy-go-lucky. They cannot be controlled anymore. You cannot tell them to wait further. But the child waited there. Maybe his uh, clothes are very dirty na because nagligid-ligid na dito. 
Tumbling, tumbling na. But he waited three hours, four hours after the meeting was finished. And the, the father, in a hurry, went back to the place hoping that his son was there. Because he was more afraid of the mother's reaction if the son was not there. He will be dead. And he, to his surprise, he saw his son waiting for him, for him there. And so he hugged his son, almost teary-eyed. He asked, he, asked, he asked his son as he was hugging him, what made you wait here for four long hours? And the son said, it's because I know you, dad, and you said you will come back. So the son waited because he knew his dad. That when his dad will say he will come back, he will come back. That was not my story. But I have the same story. One month ago, my wife told me to buy medicine. When I rode the car, my son Rocco, four years old, five years old, came running and he said, Dad, I will go with you. And during this time, when my children will say they will come with me, I will bring them as long as it's possible. Because I realize that when they grow up, they don't want to go with you anymore. Like my oldest daughter, Ia, right now, it's hard to bring him along. I bring her along. Maybe lahina yung gusto banan. I'm getting ready for that. So we went, Rocco and I went. Of course, where will you buy medicine if you are in Gusa? Rika Drugstore, right? Oh, we have it there in uh, Bill Ernesto and also here in CUMC. I went to CUMC because it's nearer to our place. And I like it there because there's a parking area in front. When we arrived there, I realized that Rocco don't have face mask and face shield. So I told him, Rocco, you cannot go inside with me. Just wait here inside the car. You lock the door when daddy goes out and you only open it when daddy is the one knocking. He said, Confidently, okay, Dad, I'll wait here. So I went to Rika. When I went inside there, ooh, so many people. So many people. So it took me more than 10 minutes to finish. When I went back, I knocked on the driver's door. I opened. It's locked. I knocked again. Lock, Yapon. When I look inside, I saw Rocco going outside from the opposite side in the, in the passenger's door. So I was thinking, I need to catch him before he will enter the door or maybe where he will go, I don't know. Luckily, I was able to catch him and I was a little bit irritated. I asked Rocco, why did you go out? I told you, did I not tell you that you will wait inside the car because daddy will come back? And he said to me, yes, but you always forget He went outside because he also knows his dad. Who always forget. And that is the reality in life. No matter how trustworthy a person is, there will come a time that they will fail you. If you will just put your hope on people, they will surely fail you. One of these days, I guarantee you. But where we should put our hope as a believer? In the Lord Jesus Christ. How can you not trust how can you not put your hope in the Lord Jesus Christ if you have already faith in Him, knowing that He is superior, sufficient than the angels, than Moses, than the prophets, than the kings, than the high priest? Okay? If you have just listened to the preachings here, who are the descriptions and how they look up to the angels, Moses, high priest, Prophets in the Old Testament days where in their respect and their regard is very high for these people. Yet, they are nothing compared to the Lord Jesus Christ. So how can you not hope in the Lord Jesus Christ? And the last feature is found in chapter 24. It says there, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. This is an invitation to respond in love. 
A person who is truly saved, who has salvation in his life, will not only respond in faith, in hope, but also in love. Now in this context, let's remember that the writer of Hebrews was speaking to the believers. Discouraged believers. And I believe there were two kinds of discouraged believers during that time. Those who are about to give up and those who are discouraged yet holding fast in their faith, standing firmly. Now if you are a believer who is discouraged and you're about to give up, how can you show love to your fellow believers? You can show love by allowing your fellow believers to minister to you, to reach out to you, to pray for you, to rebuke you if needed. Because many times, our discouragement needs to be rebuked. Especially this pandemic times where people are just spending more than half of their time scrolling Facebook, no? Seeing so many things there that will make them depressed. May pa ako ang kaila kay bagong sakyanan. Oh, they were traveling and me, I'm stuck here in this house. We would feel discouraged. If you love your brothers and sisters in Christ, even though you are discouraged, you can still show love to them by allowing them to do this to you. That instead of hiding, instead of avoiding them, because that's what usually happens when people are discouraged, depressed, they will hide from their brothers and sisters. I don't want to beat them because what they will usually say is, it's okay, don't worry. We're praying for you. God knows what's best for you. And I always hear that. And I don't believe that anymore. By doing that, you are not showing your love for your believers. Because you are not allowing them to do what they are supposed to do. Because as a believer and a follower of Christ, we have the responsibility to stimulate and motivate each other to do good works that results into encouragement of others. And if you are a believer who is depressed yet you are standing firm, you can show your love to your brothers, especially those who are weak, by not condemning them, by not judging them, but instead showing your love to them, praying for them, listening to them, And if they, need to be, they, if they need to be rebuked, rebuke them. Speaking the truth in love. Because usually, the truth is the one that will make a person be awakened. Okay? Many, ta many, many of us are afraid to tell the truth to our friends. But if you love your friends, you need to tell them the truth. And that what, that's what the writer of Hebrews is trying to tell them. That's why in verse 25, he said, 25. Oh, come on, 25. Not giving up meeting together. That's why he encouraged us. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. The writer of Hebrews knows them, knows them very well. And one reason that he found out that people are discouraged, not merely of persecution, but because they stop meeting together. They stop having fellowship with one another. We are encouraged. We are commanded not to give up on meeting together. Yes, it's good to meet up. It's, it's very, very nice these days because there's Zoom, there's Messenger, we can see each other's face. But I'm sure that this is not what the writer of Hebrews was referring to 
Because there were no Facebook and FaceTime or whatever apps we have right now during that time. Yes, we, can, we are encouraged to see each other even during pandemic. But as the opportunity arises for us to be able to make to, to meet face to face, let's do it. We're able to go out in the mall, we're able to go out on uh, the beach, we're able to attend birthday parties, we're able to attend weddings. So does it mean that we are safer there than in our wider groups, than in our church? Let us not give up, he said there. Because again, we need to stimulate and motivate each other to do good works that will result into encouraging one another. Now I believe that this message was intended primarily to encourage the discouraged believers during this time. But I also believe that there is another reason. As I have presented to you the three features of salvation, three statements that beginning with, let us, one has something to do with faith, something to do with hope, and something to do with love. Now that is the fullness of salvation. Drawing near, holding fast or holding tightly to our hope, and loving each other. Now somebody will say, somebody who will draw near to God, but falls away. That is not salvation in the first place. Somebody draws near, sticks around for a while, but does not love his brother. He falls under what First John says. Any man who says he loves God but does not love his brother is a liar. So aside from encouraging the discouraged believers, of course, if you are not a believer, okay, you will surely be discouraged with what was happening. But if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, the writer of Hebrews is trying to encourage them with the truths of who the Lord Jesus Christ is. But aside from that, He is also allowing them to look into themselves, to evaluate themselves if they truly have salvation. To evaluate themselves and those people who said that they have already fallen away, if in the first place, they had salvation. Because many people claim and proclaim that they are saved. But in the first place, they are not. It is my prayer and desire that as we are going through this series, as you have been listening to the messages here about the book of Hebrews, that you will come a point in your life if you don't have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is, that you will come a point in your life that you will make that response of drawing near to God by having faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That you will respond in hope that can only be found in the Lord Jesus Christ. And consider one another loving each other. And the same message goes for all of us. For those who have, who said or claim and declare that you have salvation, that we can also examine ourselves, look into ourselves. What are the fruits of our lives, knowing that we claim to be, to have salvation? This is a time for us to look into ourselves. If in the first place, we are indeed truly saved. Because salvation is not something that we can just proclaim and declare. But it is a free gift from God that we should receive through the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And that we should live out by drawing near to God through faith in Jesus. Holding fast on our hope that can only be found in the Lord Jesus Christ and loving each other. I hope that 
as this series will come to an end in a few Sundays from now, that we will be able to achieve the goal of the church of allowing each and every one of us to understand and to put into heart okay, the messages that we are hearing every Sunday that has something to do with our salvation, with our eternal security. That's why as we go home, let us continue to ponder upon the Word of God that we heard this morning. Shall we bow down for a short prayer? Father in heaven, thank you, O God, for ministering to us through your word. Thank you, Lord, that whatever seeds that has been planted in our hearts, O God, Lord, this uh, word that you have used, that you have allowed us to hear this morning, O God, will nourish and nurture those seeds, Lord, to grow. And if it, and if it, those, for those who have not who don't have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, that they will find their way, O God, into responding correctly, O God, giving the right response, O Lord, to be able to have a personal relationship with you. I pray, O God, as we go out from this place, Lord, you'll continue to put those words, your words, Lord God, into our hearts and into our minds. That will result, Lord God, into glorifying and honoring your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.